Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And in this video, I have more home internet updates for you guys that I wanted to share. So there was a, a, a chat that was uploaded by T-Mobile, and it was between Mike Sievert and a uh, lady that's in charge. Her name was Kendra. She's in charge, apparently, of... If I remember correctly, it's geo tracking. So, what that is essentially, she's in charge. Uh, her team is in very close uh, relationship with the network team, and she's in charge of tracking all of the uh, na uh, the acceptance for the neighborhoods across the nation. So, who's available, who's not? Tracking the analytics, the statistics, and they track it in real time. So that's really good to have a team that that's helping you best uh, figure out where you should be offering home internet and where you shouldn't be offering the, the home internet. So that was very interesting. And I felt like a few more uh, details and updates emerged from that chat. Maybe not intentionally, but it it, it happened. So Here's something very interesting that I that I wanted to share on this, and I said this in the, in the, in a previous video that I uploaded not too long ago. So T-Mobile's whole strategy is based on extra capacity for this fixed wireless access. There's no secret to it. T-Mobile is not investing; they're not spending extra capital dollars on building anything that's fixed wireless access related. So they're not they're not putting millimeter wave nodes in the middle of neighborhoods. They're not adding additional sites like say, okay, we're, let's say they came out and said, okay, we're going to add 2,000 sites in this state for home internet purposes. They're not doing that. They're feeding fixed wireless access off of the extra capacity. Now that seem, that extra capacity also seems to be very specific on what they consider to be extra capacity. So let me explain. So according to their tool, and, and I've known this too from speaking with engineers separately, on their tool, they have a forecasting option that'll show them, okay, this is what the capacity looks like in the future. It has to, The future capacity forecast has to be around the same capacity as what it is as they look at it today. And they monitor this in real time every 30 days that gets monitored. And that's if the neighborhood has availability and if it doesn't. So, for example, let's say a neighborhood has 25 slots available on, on the sector that's, that's facing the neighborhood. Of course, most neighborhoods have more houses than 25. So what happens is in this instant and why it's tracked in real time every 30 days, say out of the 25, let's just say six sign up and already are using the product. It's hard to really track, and, and, and this is according to her and what she said during the, the, during the chat, it's, it's hard to, to track human behavior. So they look at after the six signups they look at the neighborhood and they say okay wait a minute these six are heavy heheavy heavy users they do BitTorrent they download heavy uh, files they do a lot of live streaming so now based on that usage that capacity outlook and forecast is now different versus the 25 slots that were available now they look at that and they say okay these six are heavy users so now the, the one's 25 is now only 20. They took away five slots because the first six that signed up are heavy users. And that's just an example, but that's, that's how it seems to, to be how they're addressing that type of concern. And it's not a lot. They say it's, it's roughly around, I think last time they said 10% of the base is using a terabyte out of the over a million that they have added. So that's that's a decent amount, but it's not like 
you know, 50%. It's not as big. So that's that's in T-Mobile's favor. But I think as they grow this service, they're going to run into more people that use terabytes because households are bigger now. And, and you know, the, there's three, four in the house. If everybody streams 4K games and, and, and uploads and does everything that they do on a normal basis, they're, they're going to hit that terabyte by default. It's not hard to do anymore in this day and age. If you got, let's say, three streams of 4K going for a good amount of hours per day, I mean, you're, you're going to hit that terabyte, no problem. So that's how they kind of project and 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 future proof the product. Now, when they mean when they what they mean by forecasting, they don't mean a month or two or three. They literally look like two to three years out to make sure that the that the capacity in that given neighborhood is sustainable. And right now, early on, I think it's more sustainable that it will than it will be in the future because they're adding more spectrum onto the network. Right, the N forty one channel is widening. They're getting N twenty five added eventually, and eventually, they will need a new gateway that supports standalone aggregation. They will need that because that's essentially where the, all the capacity is moving towards, and that will allow them to open up the allotment for a neighborhood. The of course that that depends as well, but that will allow that to happen. So. As you can see, it's it's monitored more closely and they don't have such a, a loose approach, if you will, on that. They, they got to be more strict because they're they're only feeding that product with ex, uh, extra extra capacity. They're not building towards it and they're not spending extra capital towards it. Neville Ray, president and technology leader at T-Mobile, stated that if they did do that, if they started deploying the specifically for that the small cells the millimeter wave the fiber he said the math changes they would have to spend more and that's where capital allocation comes into play they would have to allocate capital dollars specifically for that build out and they are not doing that that's why i i still think that the seven to eight million that they're guiding by 2025 if they don't change or shift i think that's where they tap out I don't think they have the ability to go to 10 based on that availability tool. I think the way they projected that is the 7 to 8 million is essentially where they tap out on that capacity. Now, it's kind of confusing because they tell you they have access to 40 million addresses, but even they know they're not going to sell it to every single address in every given neighborhood. There's going to be openings that nobody's going to fill. But again, that also may work in T-Mobile's favor because, like I said, if the first six or seven sign up in the neighborhood and they're heavy users, that's going to slow down the, the amount that's allowed for that neighborhood. And that, and that usage is always going to increase. That's why they track it in real time and they look at that, that, that data every 30 days because it is, it's, it's a risk. Because you don't want to fill up the capacity of that sector because now your mobile usage is going to be affected. So they're going to monitor this very closely. Uh, by the way, towards the end of the video, I might as well tell you guys now, it's, it's almost time for the quarterly numbers. So in that video, in that chat, Mike Siebert said that they're now well over a million added for home internet users. The last number that I, that I was tracking and I was told, and this was fairly recent, they now have a total of 1.27 million home internet customers. And that's growing each and every day. So that might be 1.3 now. I'll have to check in and, and, and get an update. But that's that's growing on a monthly basis. In the month of May, they had a 78% increase in, in fixed wireless access sales. In June, it was like an additional 98% versus the first quarter. I mean, it's 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 crazy how that product is growing and the demand the demand is there for it, and I truly believe if they had more openings in any given na neighborhood, really, I think they could do more. But since they're just working with the extra capacity, that they're 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 tapping, they're going to tap out, 
And like I said, we really don't know what that extra capacity looks like in, in, in what kind of format that they put it in on a spreadsheet. But let's say, for example, they're like, okay, there's, there's extra capacity and we're going to allow 10% to be taken up by home internet for, for this neighborhood. That's, it's not really a lot. And you don't want to go to that 20%, 30% because, like I said, you don't want to risk your mobile users having a bad experience because everybody on home internet is downloading BitTorrents and going crazy. So let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe to the channel. Follow all of my social media outlets for more updates and interactions. This is Tyrone with Tech Life. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.